There is no single character that represents One Piece as well as the man, the woman, the myth, the legend, Bon Kure. No matter what we thought upon our first impressions in Alabasta, there isn't a One Piece fan out there that didn't fall in love with Bentham slash Mr. Two Bon Kure, a character with seemingly as many names as he has faces. At least, I can't comprehend someone seeing Bentham's multiple heroic sacrifices and not shedding a single tear over the true power of friendship that he envelops so, so well. Because you see, Bonkure is One Piece. Huh? The series, not the treasure, of course. That would be the plot twist to end all plot twists. No, what we should say is that Bentham embodies what One Piece is really all about as a series. So today we're going to talk about un, deux, trois, three ways that this character demonstrates some of the story's most important traits and themes. First, Bentham is a really wacky character who delivers a huge emotional impact. If there are two barriers of entry for new One Piece readers, it's the series length and Oda's art style. However, while 1000 chapters seems very daunting at first, once readers are actually caught up and get into the flow, they'll learn the truth. One Piece is not too long. It's actually too short in a way. But if you're watching this channel, you probably already know that. What we should talk about instead is the other complaint we might hear from people hesitant to come aboard this voyage. Oda's art style. Compared to edgier, darker looking shonen like Bleach or Naruto or James Kaisen, One Piece looks positively cartoonish sometimes. In fact, Ichiro Oda's character designs look rather unique within the world of manga as a whole. He has a style all of his own that looks more Bucks Bunny than it does Berserk. Now, people are often initially put off by this art style, claiming it looks too silly or unserious. But what these readers don't really realize is that this silliness is one of One Piece's greatest strength. One Piece is silly. It's goofy and ridiculous. It's genuinely funny and will make you laugh out loud again and again. But one of the beautiful things about that comic tone is that it makes the deeper emotional beats hit just that much harder, I think. The humor disarms us, we let our guard down, then because they're initially just along for a silly pirate adventure, the audience is reduced to tears when we learn that our crewmates have the saddest backstory known to men. Blue-nosed reindeer? He will make you cry. This speedo wearing cyborg? he will make you cry. The skeleton with an afro, yes, even he will make you cry. And so Bentham functions as a perfect, maybe the most perfect example for this phenomenon. When we first meet Bonchan, it's as Mr. Two Bonkure, an agent of Crocodile's Baroque work organization. By the way, while I was researching this video, I learned something that well, I feel like I should have known all along. Even though we often refer to Bentham as Bon Clay, as if that were their name, it turns out that Bonkure actually refers to a specific night during the Japanese Obon festival. So, whereas most of the Baroque Works agents feature male and female pairs, with the man being named after a number and the woman named after a holiday, for instance, Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week, or Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas, Bentham, on the other way, being gender fluid, has both code names, Mr. Two Bonkure. Surprisingly progressive for Sir Crocodile, or not very surprising at all if we accept the Crocomom theory. And so, as a quick note for the rest of the video, I'll be using he, him pronouns for Bentham because those are what are being used in the manga and the anime, but it's important to note that the character himself has referred to him as a man and a woman. Back to how Bentham exemplifies a wacky character with hard-hitting emotional impacts. When we first meet Mr. Two, the audience is struck by possibly the most ridiculous character design in the series up to this point. He's a drowning ballerina adorned with massive two-shaped swans and makeup job worse than that of buggies. Especially in the anime, the over-the-top drama in every one of his lines is masterfully performed by the voice actor Kazuki Yao, a performer whose energy is so unmatched 
he would eventually be welcomed into the crew properly as the voice of Frankie. He's relegated to such a position of comic relief all throughout the scene and the remainder of Alabaster that we can hardly see it coming, when in the end of this arc he disguises himself and his crew as the Straw Hats so the real Straw Hats can evade capture by the Marines. All along, Mr. Two has been espousing the power of true friendship in an exaggerated, melodramatic manner. But suddenly, when the crew's livelihood is on the line, it's Bentham who put his money where his mouth is, in a moment of complete and selfless sacrifice for his friends. And so seeing such a goofy character deliver one of the most powerful emotional moments of the show is one of the touchstones of One Piece and Bonkure is emblematic of this feature. Secondly, Bon Clay is representative of one of One Piece's most central themes. There's a really good reason that so many Western fans know the word nakama, that means companion or friend. During Bantham's first meeting with the Straw Hats, they become fast friends. Mr. Two and his entertaining copy ability mesmerizes the more immature crewmates, Luffy, Chopper, and Usopp. In fact, all of them slot in so well with each other that they immediately become lifelong friends, as he declares. However, once the crew realized that Bentham was in fact an agent of Baroque Works, who now possessed the ability to change into any of the crewmates at will, the Straw Hats devised a countermeasure against this technique. They drew X's on their wrists and then covered them by tying a bandage around the X. However, what at first was a clever way to defend against Mr. Two's devil fruit powers set the groundworks for one of the most emotional moments of the Alabaster Saga. These axes allowed for their silent goodbye to Vivi. While they couldn't risk revealing their close connection to the princess to the marines, raising these marks into the air allowed them to demonstrate their bonds to one another, signifying their undying friendship. Just before this, when the marines are in heavy pursuit of the Straw Hats, they're just able to escape Black Cage Hina when Mr. Two disguises his ship and crew as the Straw Hats acting as decoys. And even though sailing to meet Vivi at the rendezvous point will put them directly into the path of the Marines, Bonkre sacrifices himself and his crew in order to give them the chance to say farewell to their friend. They go to prison for that. Bonkle has a power that seems inherently deceitful. He uses it to impersonate Nefatari Cobra and kick off a war in Alabaster as part of Crocodile's plan. Posing as someone else has its roots in trickery and cheating. We do see this especially in its former user Higurashi, who used it to fool Odin into thinking Momonosuke was in danger, allowing Kaido to make the finishing blow in their battle. However, in Bentham's sacrifice, we see the nature of the fruit completely subverted into something truly positive and beautiful. He's still using the Mane Mane no Mi to trick someone, in this case Hina, but for the greater good of allowing his friends to continue their adventure. In fact, Mr. Two Bonkure is one of the first of Luffy's enemies who's turned into a true friend. As Mihawk correctly remarked at Marineford, Luffy's most dangerous ability is turning those around him into allies. In Impel Down, the second arc to heavily feature Bentham, this trait of Luffy is even more exemplified. What began in Alabasta with Mr. Two rallying to Luffy's aid became an entire ragtag crew of Luffy's former enemies becoming invaluable allies. Heck, even Bonkure's former employer Crocodile would join Luffy's side in the Paramount War. And once again, Bentham would make an ultimate sacrifice for the sake of friendship, allowing everyone to escape the impenetrable prison of Impel Down, so he would have to stay behind. Uh, you know what, speaking of Crocodile, he has a bounty of 81 million berries. Since I have around 580,000 subscribers, if we converted that into dollars and then converted those into berries, yen, I would have a 59 million berry bounty, making me significantly less dangerous than this slimy man right here, so please help me change that by subscribing to the channel and raising my bounty.
The third and final way that Boncure embodies the theme of One Piece is by representing the absolute freedom that Luffy seeks to bring to the world. If there is just one theme that echoes throughout the series even more powerfully than that of friendship it is the theme of freedom. Luffy wants to become the Pirate King, the person with the most freedom on the sea. Nearly every island that the Straw Hats travel to, they restore freedom to the citizens. Just like Joy Boy before him, Luffy's heart beats in time with the drums of liberation. And so I think it's very fitting that the Okama way that Mr. Two embodies is also in a way the way of freedom. In Bentham's great sacrifice at Impel Down, he grants the prisoners who allied with Luffy freedom from the prison. However, he also represents this theme to the core of his very being as an Okama. Honestly, it was a real joy revisiting all these Bonkure moments in the manga. This is the real Japanese version, by the way, which is really nice to have, even if you don't speak Japanese. Actually, have a bunch of One Piece stuff like this official color spread behind me that you can only get in Japan, which is too bad if you don't live here, especially since it doesn't look like you'll be able to travel to Japan this year. But don't worry, because that is where today's sponsor comes in. Zen Market, a Japanese company that enables you to purchase any Japan exclusive item and ship it worldwide to wherever you live for just 300 yen per item, which is roughly a bit over two bucks. For example, you can buy stuff from the Pokemon Center, from Bandai, or most importantly, One Piece things. You can even bid on Yahoo auction list here in Japan as well. I actually used just that to try and get the limited Sanji lighter in case you know about that, but that's a story for a video in itself. You do get native customer support in over 50 languages and a variety of payment options. A link in the description below. It's no coincidence that Emporio Ivankov and the Kamabaka Kingdom are aligned with the Revolutionary Army. Monkey D. Dragon opposes the authoritarian rule of the world government and the Celestial Dragons. And so with him side by side opposing this fascist force are representatives of all the oppressed people all around the One Piece world. Bartholomew Kuma, who literally had his agency stripped away to become a slave to the Celestial Dragons. The Fishmen, Hawk and Koala, representing the Fishmen who are relegated to live beneath the red line, away from the sunlight on the surface. And Emporio Ivankov, ruler of the Okama, the LGBTQ community of the One Piece world. In our real world, queer communities have fought long and hard for decades against brutal discrimination in order to be free to express themselves and be able to love and be who they are and who they love. And it's the same in One Piece for figures like Ivankov, who allies himself with the Revolutionary Army, which like, come on Sanji, you clearly have some internalized prejudices you need to work on. Like dude, you literally got a power up out of this. From the moment we meet Bentham, he's unbashedly who he wants to be. He puts no limits on his self-expression. He dresses the way he wants to, he applies makeup the way he wants to, even if not very skilled. He identifies fluidly with the gender that he wants to, his clone clone fruit even lets him literally become whoever he wants to be. This absolute freedom of expression is an extension of the very same freedom that Luffy is fighting for to bring to the world, one of the central goals and themes of the entire story. And now, remaining in Impel Down, Bonchan is the new queen of Newcomer Land. As he says during his sacrifice in Alabasta, one may stray from the path of a man, one may stray from the path of a woman, but there is no straying from the path of humanity. That is the Okama. Away. Or maybe Ivankov has already come to break him out with the help of Luffy's father. And if you want to learn more about Monkey D. Dragon and who he truly is, you really can skip this video right here.